All right, uh, just a few a programming note uh, for you. Um, as you know, we'd had uh, David Gressley signed up uh, to brief you on Yemen. Uh, that was scheduled for today, but given everything that's going on, that has been pushed back until tomorrow as a guest at noon. And at 11 a.m. tomorrow, there'll be a virtual briefing by Bubakar Ben Belhassan, the director of food and the director of the FAO's trade and market division, and he will brief you on the um, food price index. As you recall, we've been watching that food price index go up uh, quite regularly over the last few months. Turning to Ukraine, Martin uh, Griffiths, our emergency relief coordinator, today visited Bucha and Irpin outside of Kiev. He was accompanied by the Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine, Ola Stefanishnia. Uh, Mr. Griffiths described the visit as horrifying. He saw a mass grave with bodies wrapped in plastics, dozens of apartment blocks and houses destroyed, and burnt out cars in the street. Mr. Griffiths said the world is already deeply shocked by the images coming out of the area and echoed the Secretary General's call for an immediate independent investigation to guarantee effective accountability. <clears throat> From Bucha, Mr. Griffiths went to Kiev, where well, he met with the Prime Minister, uh, Denis Shmihal, the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Ola Stefanishina, and the Deputy <clears throat> and the other Deputy Prime Minister, Irina Verchuk, uh, the Minister of Defense, uh, Oleksiy Reznikov, and the Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs, Emin uh, Japarova. Uh, Mr. Griffiths listened carefully to their views and concerns and sought ideas on how to move forward on getting to a humanitarian pause and safe passage for aid deliveries and evacuations. <clears throat> These are topics he also discussed with the government, uh, government officials of the Russian Federation in Moscow on Monday. Mr. Griffiths reaffirmed our commitment to helping protect civilians and reaching all those in need of humanitarian aid as quickly as possible. He also said that after its temporary relocation, the UN will reestablish its humanitarian presence and leadership in Kiev, which Ukrainian authorities warmly welcome. Mr. Griffiths also heard firsthand accounts from the humanitarian leadership uh, in Ukraine about the recent efforts that we've gone underway in the country. He said he's deeply impressed by the work, noting especially the recent life-saving convoys to a number of critical locations. In the past six weeks, UN agencies and humanitarian NGOs have dramatically scaled up operations. Some 160 of our partners are now present in all 24 oblasts in Ukraine. That's compared to only uh, to six weeks ago when operations were limited to Eastern, uh, to Donetsk and Luhansk only. Uh, Mr. Griffiths noted that we and our partners have now reached at least 2 million people with assistance and humanitarian convoys have been mobilized to reach thousands of people in desperate need of, in some of the hardest hit areas by the conflict, including Sumy, Kharkiv and Siverdonetsk. Uh, our humanitarian colleagues are working tirelessly to expand the delivery of assistance. However, to reach those who need assistance the most, it is, key, it is key that the parties engage with us for safe passage and humanitarian pauses. On the funding side, the $1.1 billion flash appeal is now 58% funded, having received $657 million so, uh, so far. Today marks the 28th anniversary of the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda, one of the darkest chapters in human history. In his message, the Secretary General said that today we stand in awe of the resilience of the survivors and we reflect on our failures as an international community. As we remember the bloodshed 28 years ago, we recognize that we always have a choice, he said, to choose humanity over hatred, compassion over cruelty, courage over complacency, and reconciliation over rage. The Secretary General said today Ukraine is in flames and old and new conflicts fester in the Middle East, Africa, and beyond. The Sec Security Council agrees mostly to disagree, contributing to an environment of perceived impunity, impunity for state and non-state actors. The Secretary General called on us, <coughs> on us to commit to be ever vigilant and to never forget.
<clears throat> and in Rwanda itself, our team on the ground also marked the occasion and said that the country they serve today is one of the extraordinary capacity for forgiveness, resilience, dignity, and unity of purpose. The resident coordinator for De Njai added that Rwanda has shown the entire world how strong leadership, effective governance, and hard work can lead to rebuilding a wonderful country. Uh, we Turning to the situation between Armenia and Azerbaijan, we welcome the meeting between the Prime Minister of Armenia and the President of Azerbaijan under the auspices of the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, that took place yesterday in Brussels. We are encouraged by the continued direct engagement at the highest levels between Armenia and Azerbaijan. We take note of the stated commitment of the parties to engage further negotiations and to take concrete steps aimed at reaching peace and stability in the region. We know with appreciation the role of the European Union in facilitating continuing contacts and urge the sides to address all outstanding issues through dialogue and existing formats. The United Nations stands ready to support all such efforts, including through the provision of humanitarian, recovery, and peace-building assistance on the ground. And I was asked uh, by some of your colleagues about a reaction to the latest political developments in Yemen, and I can tell you that we take note of the decision by President Hadi of Yemen to irrevocably delegate his full power to a newly formed presidential leadership council. We stand ready with, to work with the presidential leadership council as well as the Yemeni parties to reach a lasting truce and a sustainable, inclusive, and negotiated settlement to the Yemeni conflict. We are grateful to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its announcements of a $300 million commitment to the UN-led uh, humanitarian response. This generous contribution will go a long way in addressing the humanitarian needs of the Yemeni people across the country. Last month, a high-level pledging conference raised $1.3 billion for the humanitarian response in Yemen. We also warmly welcome the announcement of a $3 billion package from Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to help Yemen's economy. This support will have a major impact in stabilizing the Yemeni rial, bringing down prices and reducing full sh fuel shortages, all of which are major drivers of humanitarian needs. And back here, you will see the Security Council discuss the situation in Mali this morning. In an open briefing, uh, El Ghassim Wane, the head of our peace-building mission in the country, reiterated our, our, his concerns about the security situation. Addressing the Council via video, he, um, he spoke of the reports of human rights violations committed against civilians in Mora. Mr. Wane welcomed the opening of an investigation by the Malian forces, authorities, but he added that it's also imperative that the UN mission have access to the site of the alleged violations in line with our mandate given to the, by the Security Council. Turning to the political situation, the special representative said the current status quo carries huge risks for the future of the peace agreement and deprives local population of the peace dividends they are yearning for. He also said no effort should be spared to achieve an agreement on the transition. Um, and quick update from Djibouti, where our team continues supporting authorities in response to the pandemic and other challenges. In 2021, <clears throat> the UN on the ground distributed nearly 900,000 sets of personal protective equipment, 200,000 rapid tests. To date, 150,000 persons have received at least one dose of the vaccine, with 270,000 doses landing through COVAX. We also helped distribute food to over 100,000 vulnerable people in Djibouti, supporting authorities to address the needs of 34,000 refugees and 6,000 migrants. Access to water also improved in rural areas for more than 40,000 people. 240 tons of animal feeds were distributed and to over 2,400 2, pastoralists and 212 hectares of agricultural land were rehabilitated, benefiting some 47,000 people. In addition, 19,000 children were vaccinated against measles and polio, and all the people uh, and people diagnosed with tuberculosis were treated with a cure rate of 82 percent. Uh, and our team in Peru, led by the resident coordinator, Igor Garafulich, has been following closely the political situation over the past few days in the country. Uh, the UN team is appealing to all actors to refrain from violence and, de -escalate ten and to de-escalate tensions. In light of recent social protests that led to the deaths of civilians, injuring police officers and civilians during recent clashes. 
Our team also reiterates the call for all uh, that all assembly takes place peacefully with freedom of association and expression being universal fundamental rights, helping to foster dialogue between citizens and the state. We encourage all authorities and citizens to engage in dialogue for a peaceful solution. And a quick update from Latin America and the Caribbean, where we are coordinating the training of future peacekeepers. That's uh, military personnel from Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Guatemala, Mexico, Peru, and Uruguay, as well as 21 civilians. The training wrapped up this week in Brazil, preparing a fresh group of 180 women and men for UN peacekeeping operations. Led by the UN resident coordinator in Brazil, Silvia Rux, the team in Brazil engaged with the recruitment process along with the International Organization for Migration, UNESCO, UNHCR, and the UN Office for Drugs and Crime. Today is World Health Day, and the World Health Organization issued an urgent call for accelerated actions by leaders and all purposes to preserve and protect health and mitigate the climate practice as part of our, our one, excuse me, of an Our Planet, Our Health uh, campaign. Uh, I will stop there. Madam, and then if to some. Stefan, I wonder if you could give us some reaction to the vote in the uh, General Assembly. Uh, I know the Secretary General is very strong about um, asking for uh, mm -hmm. uh, accountability and, and uh, investigations of what's happening in Ukraine, but he's also <clears throat> cautioned against removing a member from the Human Rights Council. What's his reaction to the vote? Sure. I mean, uh, the, the member states have taken a decision. Uh, I have no addition, anything to add to what we've already said. Our focus is on what's going on on the ground. I mean, as you saw, Martin Griffiths today went to Bucha himself, the senior most uh, UN representative to be there. He's speaking with the authorities in, um, uh, in Kiev, our human rights uh, colleagues uh, are also uh, focusing on the human rights violations that we're seeing on, on the ground. What we want to see is a, uh, an investigation that is transparent, that is independent, and where we get at some point effective accountability uh, for what we are seeing in Ukraine currently. But he has warned against the precedent here. So does kicking Russia off of the Human Rights Council help achieve those goals? There are various mechanisms uh, within the UN system uh, to ensure accountability uh, for what could be very serious crimes. Uh, those mechanisms are currently underway, including uh, work of the International Criminal Court, which is independent from us. Also, the Human Rights um, Council approved a commission of inquiry on Ukraine, and we hope everyone supports the work of those two bodies. Follow up on that. Uh, so, um, so you said your position remains the same. Could you remind us exactly what's your position? You, can, you are you are no, as well versed in looking at the transcripts as I have. No, but I mean, the, I, I listen. I, I think you know. The, we stated our position. Uh, The, the decision to move forward is a decision of member states. It's not one that the Secretary General is involved with, and just as he's not involved in the decisions taken by other legislative uh, bodies. Our focus is right now on what is going on on the ground in Ukraine. Um, do you, the, the Russian ambassador, uh, when he was asked, I think, two days ago uh, about whether uh, such a step could have a negative effect on negotiation uh, between the Russians and Ukrainians in Istanbul. He said that it could have also some effect. Uh, do, you, do you believe that this could have a negative effect? Uh, we, we, we hope that the parties will continue to negotiate, uh, will negotiate in good faith. We very also much hope that in the immediate uh, or in the more nearer term, uh, there is agreement on a humanitarian pause, which is what Martin Griffiths has been doing, and first going to Moscow, and now uh, he's in Kiev, uh, in order for us to get humanitarian aid to those thousands and thousands of people who need it, and also to support the ICRC's own effort uh, to get people out 
of danger. Does it make sense, though, to kick them off the council that's investigating them before the investigation has been complete? I, I, Is there enough evidence to do that? I, I think, listen, on, on, uh, on the mechanisms involved, I mean, I, that's not for me to, uh, to comment. As I mentioned, there, there are a number of mechanisms that work outside of the Secretary General Authority. The wheels are turning, and we hope uh, people will support the work of those two institutions. Okay, uh, I don't see anything. Oh, Abdel Hamid, please. Thank you, Stefan. My question on Yemen. Uh, today, uh, the President Abed Rabdo Mansour had he appointed a presidential council of seven members. How do you evaluate this step? Does it help the uh, efforts uh, uh, Abdel Hamid, I just read out a whole note on that uh, just a few minutes ago. Maybe you, you came in late. I will send you the, sorry, the, the, the that's okay. I will send you the I will send you the text. Okay. Polina Thank Kubiak, you. you're up to bat. Thank you all. We'll see you tomorrow with at eleven o'clock FA on food price index, which will be interesting. And uh, just after 12 with David Gressley, uh, our Yemen humanitarian envoy, which will also be interesting. Thank you.